Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Conversations Beyond the Pulpit. Today's topic is strength and resilience. And when I thought about this topic, I could not think of any better person to come and speak about strength and resilience but my father, William Solomon. My dad has always been an inspiration to me, and I wanted for him to share his story because I believe that it's very inspiring and that someone that's watching it could be just as inspired as I have been my entire life having him as my dad. So let's welcome William Solomon. Hey, hello. So my first question is, what does the word resilience mean to you? Resilience means to me the ability to, uh, even when you don't want to, go on in life to just keep moving, you know, keep facing what you got to face, no matter what it is. And uh, it just so happens that I don't take no credit for it, but God, I call him Allah, gives me the fortitude to endure even when I don't want to endure, you know. Uh, it's something that I really didn't know about to actually enter in the social work field. That word, what it meant, and people used to give me credit, but I don't. I don't take no credit for it. I give all the credit to uh, Allah, and uh, to me, God works through people. Mm -hmm. So resilience is from you get it from love. In support of other people, yeah. So you've been through a lot of things in in your life, um, stemming from your childhood, but just overcoming different sicknesses. If you could just speak in a few short words about what kind of things you overcame in your childhood. Well, uh, I had a good I had a good childhood, but I used to like to play a lot of basketball and. You know, growing up as a child, there was a lot of peer pressure, and you know, I used to have a couple of drinks of beer, and uh, you know, I lived kind of fast. I was always curious, you know, and defiant. You know, when I when I became an uh, adolescent, it continued for a long time. <laughs> Because I stopped growing once I started drinking beer and then experiment with other things like uh, alcohol and then I ended up uh, having bad experience from that, uh, smoking marijuana uh, and then getting involved in a whole lot of things that would lead me to jail but I didn't I didn't go to jail, thank God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I ended up uh, in institutions for short periods of time. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a dropout, a high school dropout from school. And, uh, you know, like just a, a disgrace to my whole family. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a lot of peer pressure to, to uh, dress nice. You know, back back in the in the sixties, the influx of heroin too, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a lot of friends that died, that never got a chance to tell their story. I always wanted to write write, and and kind of like resurrect them because right. a lot of them that, that got caught up in AIDS and things like that, and I ended up having a uh, my liver get messed up, and my kidney. I had a uh, liver and a kidney transplant, and uh, my life turned around at 26 years old. I'm 62 now, and uh, I got it, I got after these transplants, you know, and after 26, I stopped, and I've been uh, without alcohol or drugs for 35 years, and I don't intend to uh, to use it anymore, one day at a time. So uh, I give God credit for everything right. because you know. Since then, you know, my turn, my life around before you was born, a little bit, right, right around when you was born, and uh, got married, divorced, 
married again, went back to school, got three degrees, but it's nothing to, to brag of. And I just set out to always help people. Right. If I was in a position, I always helped them. That was something that came innate, or probably from my mother. Right. Um, not, not probably, it did come from my mother, right. Karen, and things like that. So. I think I always see you overcoming obstacles. Like my entire life has been seeing you overcoming obstacles, even from when I was a child. And you know, you got first, you first was diagnosed, and I remember it just, you know, you being in the, the house, and you know, you being very sick, and not being able to do the things you wanted to do as, as a father. And then you overcame, you overcame that. And then just recently, you know, with your kidney transplant, just going through that that entire process, and you overcame. And um, I know that it's, it's God, definitely, 100%. But on a personal level, like, how do you how do, you do it? You? <laughs> you know, people still want me around. <laughs> you know, people, I, still, I still have a need. I guess the worst thing that can happen to a, a person is not, not, to have, not to get love and not, ha not to have anybody that wants them around, finds joy. And uh, them being around uh, takes interest in them, uh, kind of values, not value, yeah, values their, their presence, you know, don't take them for granted, right. things like that. That makes you want to love, that makes you want to live, even if, you know, there's been a point where I guess, I don't know how the people feel when they want to commit suicide, mm -hmm. but I imagine they want to, they fight in something and they're not, telling nobody what they fight and maybe they want love, you know, maybe they got hang ups, what they call them demons mm -hmm. and uh, like that. But, you know, I'm just like, like to be happy because when I, 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 I left out that part, I was always a comedian. It's just when I got beat down from, from my experiences and all of them I brought on myself. It wasn't my mother's fault, it wasn't my father's fault. It wasn't my wife's fault, mm -hmm. it was my fault. So I take responsibility for everything mm -hmm. bad that happened to me, you know. Uh, now I'm just, I'm just happy, man, you know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not working no more. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to work. No, let me stop. But, uh, so. Don't even want to see work. <laughs> After working as a social worker and, uh, well, I, 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 I don't, in an in a environment that was the spook who sat, not the spook who sat by the door. The, uh, what's that picture with the guy that, he was normal and he went in the, he went in the, I have no idea. The, the guy who flew over the cuckoo's desk. Oh. It was, it was, it was a trouble. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, you're so funny. What was your biggest challenge? Like, even when you speak about the things that you've been through, and, you know, we haven't gone fully in depth about it, but you did have a, a liver transplant at, how old were you? Oh, 30-something, 37. And then you had a kidney transplant just recently. Yeah, but like in 58. But in between that, you dealt with other, just like health complications, Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Diabetes and different things and what was the biggest blood pressure what was the biggest thing that you felt you overcome out of everything that you o went through? overcome mm -hmm. uh, living it was the hard part uh, I want to live you know it was like mm -hmm. it was just like before I was like I didn't I really didn't feel the need to go on, go on living. I've seen so many people die, including my my friends. You yeah. know, and uh, I didn't want to get old. I don't want to get old. <laughs> so that was another thing I wasn't too interested in. So living is about the hardest wow. thing because in order to live, you got to pay rent, you got to buy food, you got to pay taxes. A lot of these things, I'm not. I'm not interested in the tax part. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people say if you use the uh, black card, I'm not using the black card, right. but, oh, you got things against you. No, there's no excuse because I'm black. This, this is holding me back. 
Nah, matter of fact, I don't even, I don't even look into it as uh, the black, white, or any other nationality. Mm. Everything is like, is, to me, is one God, and the race thing is made up by some mm. character that just divide people. Yeah. That's very interesting. So, but that's so just my theory. So you think that life was the biggest. Li challenge. Living, living was a big living, challenge you have living. you have to overcome because you see people die like right. I watched my mother die that that's that that's not and you see loved ones go right. that's not uh I mean it's life right it's just like what I went through is life but if I had listened more maybe life would have been more be more happier mm. but I didn't so I face what I have to face. If I need a mental health, if I got to see a, 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 a psych, or if I have to see a therapist, I, yo, I go avail myself to right. that. You know, I work on my issues. You know, and how has God played into your life, your relationship? Well, He works life? through people. You know, I, I, I met people that gave me help that I followed up on because they had been in my shoes. Mm -hmm. And they shared, took the time to share with me, to uh, g give me their phone numbers and uh, give me the answers that I could apply to th that helped work in my life. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, a big, now I got a, a wide support system, you know, so, and I, I, you part of that too. So if you can encourage somebody who maybe has experienced some of the things that you've experienced, dropping out of school and going back to get your degree or dealing with health issues or, you know, constantly battling with um, maybe like de to be depressed about situations, if you have one piece of advice that you can give them, what would that piece of advice be? Or maybe if it's me, what would you, what would you say? Well, I would say like uh, do the research, you know, because they got everything The world is in your hand with the uh, computers and the, the phone and, you know, uh, don't be ashamed to, to get help and, you know, listen, because if you listen, you, you, you can learn from people that have been through the, the, that experience and they could kind of walk you through what you have to do depending on the, 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 the situation that, that, that you face, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, you know, it's not what they say if a man is not supposed to cry and all that stuff. That's garbage. You know, uh, you just uh, follow the steps of others that been in your shoes. I got a lot of, you know, I have resources. We all got resources. And, you know, human beings are, are fantastic, you know, awesome. Marvelous, so they, they got a lot of information that can help you get closer to God. Right. You know, not like being a, I'm not, you know, like a zealot. I don't know if that's the, the word, zealot. Like zealous. Mm -hmm. You know. But it's true. People and To be a God. fanatic, you know. Right. I, yeah. You know, it's all right if they want to be a fanatic, but I'm not giving out leaflets and stuff like that, <laughs> you know. But and life is life. Life is great. You got your ups and your downs. Just, all you need is a few good people. Right. Well, I tell you all the time, you inspire me. And even after speaking to you, I still don't know what it is that's in you <laughs> <laughs> that motivates you. <laughs> so it leads me to believe that it's just the power of God. And I tell everybody that asks me, you know, like. How, like, when did you start believing in God or what makes you believe in God or, you know, how do you have faith? And I'll let anyone know, seeing God's hand over your life, and I know that you are living because of some of my answer prayers, but just seeing God's hand over your life, is a, it's, it's, it has impacted, it has impacted me. It has shown me that God is, is real, mm -hmm. you know, and as children of God, he cares so much about us. And I think that your story is a story of resilience. You know, it's a story of strength, and I don't know if you fully 
know the power that you have. You just go through life. But I do know that you have a higher power that you that you serve, and you spend time with him, and you allow him to talk you through life. So I thank you for being here, for sharing part of your story, and I hope that you're motivated and encouraged to share your story with others because people are going through things and they don't feel like they can make it. You know, and if anyone in this world to me is an example of somebody <laughs> that made it, it's you. So I don't take no credit for it. Right, I could tell. So I thank you for talking to me and sharing a bit of your wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> don't give me a handshake. <laughs> <laughs>